Wedding Party Rescue from John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. When Jesus lived on earth, a wedding was just about the biggest party any family would ever have. A Bible Times wedding was a big celebration that usually included feasting and games and dancing that lasted for days. The families of the bride and groom spent many months preparing for such a wedding, storing up special food and drink so that everyone, relatives, neighbors, friends, and even friends of friends would have plenty to eat and drink for as long as the wedding party lasted. It would be an insult to the wedding guests if the food or drink ran out. The family who had invited them would be very embarrassed. For years and years, people might tell about the wedding where they ran out of food or wine. Now, Jesus went to Cana, a city in Galilee. Jesus and his mother Mary and his disciples had been invited to just this sort of wedding at Cana in Galilee. As they walked through the little village of Cana, the whole town must have been buzzing with excited preparations. Since houses didn't have running water, huge stone water jars were filled and left outside the door. Bread was baked, floors were swept, special clothes were set out, wine and special food that had been stored were brought in. When the bride arrived at the groom's house, the wedding party began. Such a party you never have seen. It was like a Christmas dinner, a huge birthday party, and a week at Grandma's house with all the relatives all rolled into one. But after a while, something awful happened. They ran out of wine to serve to the guests. Perhaps more people came to the wedding than the families had planned. Whatever the reason, there was no more wine to serve to the wedding guests. We don't know how Mary found out about this problem, but we do know that Mary knew just who to talk to when she needed help for an unexpected problem. Mary went to Jesus and probably leaned over to speak very quietly. John 2 verse 3 says, And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no more wine. They have no more wine, she said. She knew how embarrassing this would be for the families, so she probably didn't want anyone else to hear. Jesus said to her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. Jesus told Mary that the time when he would begin to do miracles in public hadn't started yet. But Mary was confident that Jesus could solve this big, unexpected problem. Mary went right over to the servants who were standing together. Pointing to Jesus, she said, Do whatever he tells you. There were sitting six water pots of stone containing 20 to 30 gallons of water in each of them. Jesus told the servants, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. Those big stone jars held a lot of water. After the servants had filled them, Jesus said, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. In other words, Now take some out of one of the jars and give it to the master of the banquet. Every wedding banquet had a man who acted as the master. He made sure everything went smoothly, and no doubt he had been very worried about how to get more wine. When the servants took the wine to him, they didn't tell him where it had come from. Slowly he tasted the wine. After he had tasted the wine, the master or governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. 
In other words, everyone brings out the choicest wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have well drunk, he remarked. But you have kept the best wine until now. This wine was far better than the first wine that had been served. Although that first wine had been the very best the family could buy, this wine was the best of the feast. Jesus had fixed the problem by turning ordinary water into the very best wine. It was a miracle! And the Bible tells us that when Jesus' disciples saw this miracle, they put their faith in him and they believed in him. It was the first miracle Jesus did to show his power and glory. When Jesus turned water into wine, he did something that no one else could do. The people who saw what Jesus did began to believe in him right then and there. Jesus still wants us to believe in him and he wants us to trust him and ask for his help, especially when we have unexpected problems. We can always be confident that he will hear us. Jeremiah 17:7 7 says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. This is what the Bible says about people who are confident in or trust in Jesus. We know that because of Jesus' love and power, he will give us the very best help there is. A toothbrush is something that you use every day. It's not exciting at all. This week, when you're brushing your teeth each day, remember that you can trust Jesus every day, even when you're doing ordinary things like brushing your teeth or finishing your homework. Let's connect it all to Jesus. When Jesus performed his first miracle, turning water into wine, Jesus didn't do anything magical or spectacular. He just gave the word and the water changed. It was the same way God created the world. God spoke and creation happened. It was something that only God himself could do. This was the first glimpse of Jesus' glory, the glory of the one and only Son of God. 